Okay, welcome to this tutorial. I'll be making two caps simultaneously. So this is the brown cap and this is the white cap material. That's our scissors. Our hard stay, not too hard like that. I'll also be using the soft stay. And I have paint so I'll be using the chalk to write out the measurement. So straight to what we'll be doing for the day. So the measurement we'll be working with is 22 and a half. So I'll be making both caps differently. So you can get like two different ways to make a cap. So our, our measurement is 22 and a half, but we'll be adding three inches. So this three inches will be for sewing allowance. So I'll add three, three inches. And we are adding 3 inches because we are cutting our cap material into 3. And each of those 3 parts we are adding will, 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 will be joined by half inch each. So half inch each at both sides will give us 25 and half. So the first thing we will be doing is to divide 25 and half by 3. Now, don't... Wait, I don't think this video will be difficult for you to understand. It will be very, very easy. So, our cap round length is 22 and a half. And we added 3 inches, 25 and a half. That 3 inches, when we divided it, we, get, we got 8 3 quarter. But I'll be adding a little bit more than 8, almost 9, if not even 9 inches. So, that 9 inches is what I'll be using to form my slant. So, as you can see now, I've gotten my slant. But I don't, if I wanted to use the exact division, I will use what I got from dividing 25 and a half. But I want a little SS. Why I want a little SS is that when you, you finish your cap, you, you should always leave room for adjustment. Because you never can tell. So, I've slanted almost 9 inches. So as you can see, what I slanted wasn't actually a constant. I showed you how I got it. So it is from the height of the cap now will determine how high it will be. So I'm measuring 13 to see if I can cut 13 into 3. So this is the second measurement. So I'll try it for the third. So from what I can see now, what is left is actually small, not big enough for the top of my cap. So I'll reduce that to 12 and check again. So I'm trying to show you how to get everything you need. I'm not telling you measure 6, measure 5, measure 4. No, look how to get it. So now I'll measure 12 again. So for the, for the round width of the cap which is 25 and a half I added 3 inches and which is 22 and a half I added 3 inches it became 25 and a half those 3 inches were for sewing allowance so what I got from 12 now is looking good enough so I will measure 12 and cut off 12 inches as my cap mind you the 12 inches is not actually the height of the cap hole. because if you are if you are very conversant with shapes and mathematics you will know that what you actually get from this kind of cutting is a parallelogram and for a parallelogram <laughs> that's not your height I will also show you how to how to determine the height of, a, of the cap so back to my explanation I added 3 inches the 3 inches is for sewing allowance and in the course of this video I will critically explain I will critically explain those three inches to you. I will show you, so just be patient. So as you can see now, I'm measuring my 12 inches. And mind you, while I'll be sewing the white cap, I'll be doing things a little differently from the way I did while I sew in the brown cap. The way I'll fix the top of the brown cap is different from the way I'll fix the top of the white cap. So I'm just trying to show you the differences 
in ways of making a cap. So the, the part of making this cap that will be the same, I will not be showing in the course of the video, only the parts that are different. So the length of the material you are giving will determine how high your cap will be. There's no magic why you are doing that. So 12 is what we've used and we've actually cut out, cut out everything. My cutting wasn't actually straight, my measurement, so I'm not really sure you actually fit in, but I can always trim whilst I'm working. So now how to get your height. This is your height. So now that is the height of your cap. So the next thing we'll be doing is at attaching stay to the edge of the cap. Now there are advantages and disadvantages and disadvantages in doing this before or after. Now for this brown cap we are doing before, before sewing, we are adding stay. So one of the disadvantages is it's tedious when you're adding stay to the top, adding stay to the bottom of separate caps. Uh, another disadvantage is the fact that when you want to start joining the side of those three cut out pieces, the stay becomes a problem. So for me, I usually use my hand in rearranging the stay, not necessarily trimming. I use my hand because if you trim off the edge of this cap, that part too also will start losing off. So we don't usually cut the edge of this cap material because it is made in a way that it doesn't trim off. It is like a finished edge. So I'll be adding stay to the, the different edges because if you don't add stay to your edge and you're working with your cap, it will start losing off. The height you started with won't be the height you you probably end with. So my advice is sometimes you watch videos and you see how beautiful everything is. When you are making it, it's not as easy as that. So I would prefer you just add your stay and make sure you have control over everything. Because if you add your stay, you can maneuver your cap however you like while you are sewing. So now let's go to the biggest disadvantage, disadvantage of adding stay to your cap before sewing. And that is what I'll be showing now. The, the edge of the cap is very hard to, to trim the stay off the edge of the cap. So mostly I use my hand in bending it inwards. So because of how tedious it will be, I will not be actually showing the process of sewing. I'll just I'm just telling you now that you bend it inwards when you are joining, so I don't want to waste our time. So after bending it inwards, you can always use your pressing iron to gum it back after sewing. So the next thing I'll be doing now will be to explain the three inches added sewing allowance. Now, when sewing, I added three for the length, for the round length, round measurement. So that's half, that's half, that's one when I'm sewing. That's half, that's half, that's one. That's half, that's half, that's one, making three. So that's the three inches I added. So I hope that's explained. So after joining both sides, that's what you get. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to take my round measurement. Remember, while I was cutting, I cut out SS's. So that's why I'm taking my round measurement. So let's say I didn't cut out any SS. I'll just join. Now for the fact that I cut out SS's, I always have SS's. And the reason why I cut out SS's is because of amendment. So I'll take five measurement downwards again. Five measurement downwards again from that part. That's not actually the middle. But I just want to get my measurements right. So I'll measure 22 and a half again and mark like I did at the top. So I'll come to the bottom, measure 22 and a half again and mark. So that is enough to give me a perfect line of 22 and a half. 
so i'll make a line and that line is what i'll be joining i'll be joining that part to the other part so that's the half inch that's the half inch so we are joining excesses here because of the excesses i had i added so as you can see joining your cap like this is actually beautiful because everything is just slanted from the beginning to the end it's like cycle it has no beginning it has no end so after joining from the inside that's what you get so the next thing i'll be doing is to use so the finished edge is good so i sew on the edge from the outwards so everything is good and sewing your cap like this is good because of amendment because if you sew it straight it will lose if you want to amend it it will lose but if you sew it slant like this you can easily lose it do your amendment increase or reduce and it won't even look as if that cap was touched when you see people running away or shying away from amending the cap it's because of the way they actually made the cap if you made it confidently well like this you will be able to amend increase or reduce to any size after finishing the cap i can easily increase the size as to as much as one inch and i can, and I can easily reduce the size to whatever size that is needed so that is that next thing i'll be pressing and straightening out the front part so as you can see everything is looking good everything was sewn at the edge so the next thing i'll be doing is to add my stay round so for some people they prefer to put their stay before joining but for me i like it after joining because as you can see it gives me the the power to control the position of the stay and as you can see i'm putting it a bit above half inch not up to one inch but a little bit above half inch now your stay doesn't actually really really gums firmly on your material like that what actually keeps the stay firmly is your sewing so that's why most times you just need to sew it because if you just feel like you gum your stay and you leave it like that without sewing it you just discover that after finishing your cap your stay is just dangling inside your cap so it is advisable you sew it and on sewing there are ways to do it some people prefer to just sew like 20 lines on the stay just repeatedly like that but from from my own part of from from my own experience of or from my own point of view i think you don't sew you shouldn't sew much on a cap that already has a line as design you can do that much sewing on a plain material not on a cap that already has lines as design it just complicates everything so the next thing i'll be doing is pressing down just making sure everything is well arranged so, so to sew my cap the first thing i'll do is to bend it inwards to the edge of the stay that i added the strong stay i added people usually call it hard stay and this is not necessarily hard stay it's just what we call gum stay i actually added how will i put it i i layered two i layered one on another on another one and i got that it's not necessarily a hard stay like that so you can always use your gum stay to form a hard stay just layer one gum stay on another on another gum stay it becomes hard enough to form here to form hard stay i hardly use hard stay because i think sometimes it's unnecessarily hard and anything we put on our body i don't really think should be too hard like that so what i actually did was to layer one gum stay on another gum stay and it was hard enough for me to use so after fi after finishing 
the edge of the cap also and that's what i get as you can see what i saw is a little bit tiny i think in the course of this process i'll actually lose it and increase the stitches some people make lines like that like what i'm explaining now they just keep on sewing sewing but there's already line on it on the cap and i don't think there's any need to make ss lines So for me, uh, it's just the line I'll be making on that edge and the line I'll be making on the bottom edge. After both lines, I'm not making any other line again. But let's be honest, the cap is actually looking good. And everything I'll be doing is actually an easy process to follow. So we've done enough for the brown material. So we'll be going into the white material. Now for the white material, I measure my 12 and I'm cutting out the first part to be cut off. I'll use that part I cut off to cut the remaining part unlike the, the brown material that I was measuring to from both sides. Now like I said earlier, I'm doing things slightly differently. So when you're doing yours, you always choose. So it's like I'm giving you options. So this is a bit easier compared to the way I did the brown material and it's a bit more perfect compared to the way I did the brown material. So I'm cutting off the third and from observations you see that the white material is actually longer than the brown material because after cutting you could see that what was remaining from the white is a bit bigger than that of the brown. So now for the white material I'll be joining before adding my stay to the edges and you can see the disadvantage of doing that. It's already losing enough at the edge at the bottom too and it's not as if i did much work on it though, just to join the edge so i just actually did that to show you the advantage and disadvantages of adding your gum or your soft gum stay to the edge of your cap before sewing and after sewing so i'm very sure now you can make your choice based on preference for me, I would prefer to add your gum stay before sewing at all. So you don't lose as much as a quarter of an inch. If you add your stay and it comes perfectly well before you start working at all, you will have a single problem from the beginning to the end of the process of making your cap. Now, if I'm being practical, I will trim off that part that's already losing losing it, and that that would affect that would affect the the height of the cap. But for the fact that I'm using a stay now, it will hold it perfectly well, and there will actually be no problem moving forward. So I just hope you can decide for yourself and. Make your choice based on your strength. Strength, I mean, in terms of sewing. So that being that, the way we made or we join our three pieces, you can see it's a, it's a bit quite different in terms of the brown and the black. I mean, I said black, that of the brown and the white. So there is less stress in terms of controlling the edge, the gum stay at the edge, but the risk is a little bit unnecessary. 
So that being that, we'll go straight to the top because joining is the same process. So there's no need stressing on that. So as you can see, I I arranged the edge in the form that it goes down a bit because the edge will also form part of the curve. And the the idea of making the top of a cap is to first actually make it as big as possible. That's the first step. Cut, join, make it as big as possible. What I'm cutting now will actually be as big as 27, 28. And the circumference of my cap is 22 and a half. Now, this gives me opportunity to adjust however we are like. As you can see, it's forming a funny shape. <laughs> so I'll be trimming off to get the, the best and the required shape. But I'm always being careful when I'm working. So I always make sure I'm on the safe side. And the safe side in this process is cutting it as big as possible before trimming off. And your eyes have to actually be, be working really well when you are into tailoring. Because like I said earlier, I didn't actually measure it before I'm telling you it's 28 or 27. <laughs> but from the look of it and from continuous practice, I can easily tell how big something is without even measuring. So the next thing I'll be doing is adding stay to the edge. And that edge is actually the part of the cap that I'm losing out. So as you can see, the stay I'm adding is not actually a whole stay like that. There are pieces, and these pieces are gotten from my previous jobs. Let's say I'm making a suit and I am in need of stay. I don't usually throw away my pieces. I have like a, like a bag full of pieces of stay. So whenever I'm making a cap, it's very easy for me to just go into the bag, bring out some and use. So you just keep gumming till you're done with the gumming. And after the gumming, we'll go straight to the cutting of the material we'll be using in lining the cap joining the material to the cap material after that sewing and all that i'm just trying to take my time to show you every single process involved so the next thing i'll be doing is trimming off Because while we are making the top, you will, you will have to like adjust multiple times. So it's better you stay your cap and make sure everything is ready for the tax at hand. So that's that. So for me, I think this is as big as 27 or 27 and a half inches. So that's big enough. So now, initially, there's a way we cut the top of the cap. Now, this is the first part we cut off. When you attach the first part, you cut off to the remaining part of the cap. It, also, it always perfectly fits each other. It doesn't even matter if the lines are 300. When you join it, it will align perfectly well. So we usually do that when the top of the cap material left is not big enough. But for this case, it is big enough. So we just use the big parts and just cut off what we need but in cases where the leftover is not big enough you can always join the initial part you cut off to the part that is left after cutting off your three piece So for cap measurement, it's basically three pieces when you're cutting off. I, I, I don't think I've seen a head as that is bigger than 25. What I usually see is 22, 23 and a half, 24. I don't even think I've seen 24 and a half. 
so by cutting three pieces it should be enough to make your round head measurement So, just for curiosity's sake, we'll check our, we'll just check a rough round measurement of <laughs> what we got here, just to kill the curiosity in our mind. And as you can see, I'm getting something around 27 and a half or 27 inches. So just like I did for the white, I'll do for the brown. Because the way I'll be fixing the top of the brown and the way I'll be fixing the top of the white is different. So for the white, the way I'll be fixing the top is actually uh, it's a method I call the safe method. If you are the type that maybe you're a newbie in tailoring and you just want to make sure you don't have issues. Because for me, white sewing, I don't think there's any issue I can have that I can fix. I will always find a solution. But if you're sewing and you feel like you don't want issues that will make you start looking for materials to buy, to replace, so I think you can just follow the white, the, the way I made the top of the white cap. But if you are a bit professional in tailoring and you are quite sure of yourself, you can always just follow the brown method because it's easy and also perfect. Not that the white isn't perfect, the white will require much work and it's also safe. So just like I did for the white, I'll be trimming off the excesses of steel from the brown and after that we'll jump straight into the joining process of the top to the bottom. <laughs> did I just say that? Okay, I didn't mean it like that. We'll be joining the top to the body of the, of the cap. So the next thing we'll be doing just to save time is to show you the materials we'll be using to line our cap. I like to cut my materials for lining SS. I never cut the same size because I don't like to repeat once and twice. I like to do it once and just forget I've done it. So to be safe, I always try to cut my material in S my materials in SS, which I've done here. Uh, so just like I explained about keeping excesses of stays in case I need it, I also keep excesses of materials I use in working just to line caps like this. So we're jumping straight to the final part of the job. So the first thing I'll be doing here is attaching the lining of the cap, uh, the lining of the top of the cap to the top of the cap. And that means sewing to the edge as close as possible. I like to sew first before trimming because it's safer that way. So after sewing, I can always trim to the exact size of it. Now, like I made mention, like I made mention earlier, this particular method is the safe method. It's not what I use. The method I usually use in making the top of a cap is the brown method. But for the sake of people who are not that confident in themselves or first timers, I would advise to use the method I'm using now in making the white. So I'm measuring 23 instead of 22 and a half. I'm measuring 23 because I always like my lining to be free inside and not tight. If your lining is tight, it will affect the structure, the outlook of your cap or any material you're making. Your lining needs to be free inside. So the next thing I'll be doing is to check, after check, bring it out back, wear the cap inside the lining. So after doing that, I'll just make a half inch sewing round. Remember I told you 
I attached the, the strong stay inside the lining a little bit above half inch. I actually did that because after joining your lining to your cap, you still have to bend part of the cap material inwards and that is the little excesses above the half inch because you don't need to bend your hard stay when you are arranging the outlook of the cap. So I finished doing that. Now that's the SS, the half inch SS when I was cutting the line. That's the half inch SS. You know, I, I actually cut 23 instead of 22 and a half. But it's preferable because it makes things work well for you. Now the the bits of SS's above half inch when I was placing my hard stay on my cap is what I would bend inwards before sewing. Because I don't need to bend the hard stay. So in doing this, you have to be very good in handling the machine. If you are using a manual machine like I'm using right now, you could see that I'm not even touching the handle of the pedal. I'm just focusing more on the cap. And that's simply because I have control over my machine. My control over my machine is good. So the next thing we'll be doing is something in form of braille. You know what they call braille? Braille is how blind people use their hand to read books by touching it. So that's what we'll be doing now. It's something like a braille way of sewing. So I'll be sewing the line into the edge of the cap and I'm not actually seeing the edge of the cap but I'm just doing that by touching. So as you can see I'm just touching and not actually seeing the edge of the cap. So after doing that, I'll trim off the SSs. So as you can see, I always take precautions while working. I'm trimming off the SSs after I already stitch both materials together. So the next thing will be adding the top to the bottom. <laughs> the top to the bottom, top to the body. I will notch the edge of the, the center, notch the edge at the other point. Now I have to notch edge at both centers. I'll start from one of the notched edges. And I'll start sewing and I'll sew from that notched edge to the other notched edge because after doing that I must have succeeded in sewing round past one of the curves because if you see the way I cut the top of the cap it have it, it's got two curves one at one end one at the other end so after sewing from one notched part to the other part I would have succeeded in sewing past one of the curve ends of the top of the cap. Now, like I rightly said earlier, the top of the cap I cut is four and a half inches bigger than the circumference of the cap. But I'm just doing this just to stay safe. So, and for people who are actually doing this for the first time can easily choose this method. So I will have to check now if I have gotten to the notched part of the other part. And I think I'm on the notched part, so I'll just stop here. So I'll just stop here. So now this is the technical part of this procedure. So for the curve now, it's left for you to determine the curve. And that's that comes and that's where your eye comes to work. So you use your pin. You can use four, five, six, seven pins to arrange it. Use your pin to just hem it down. Me, I'm using only one. But you can use you can use four or five depending on how confident you are. But the fact that I use only one don't mean I always get it right at the at first try. As you can see, after doing this cap, I didn't get it right after the first try. I had to lose it and do it again before getting it right. So my advice is 
use four to five pin after holding it down check it if it is right rearrange the uh, the hemming of your pin before even sewing at all but for me mr oversabi as you can see i already use my pin to hold it down then i'm sewing right away so that's just what i'm doing and after my first try i didn't get the perfect curve to look exactly like the other curve so my thread ran out So we'll go back to our sewing process now. So from looking at things, I know the curve is not the way I want it to be. You can see there's a pointed edge there, and I don't want that. So the next thing to do is to lose it, redo it again until I get it. And I don't want to bore you with that. So as you can see, I've already done that and I've already gotten it. Now, like I said, this is for beginners. If you want to make a cap, you can always do it like this. This is for beginners. Now, the way I will make the brown now is for professionals. Those who have control over how they trim off SSs. Because you don't trim off SSs carelessly and expect to get the second procedure of making the cap. So our cap is finished and in bending the cap I can choose any direction to bend it like I said earlier because everything is all slanted and I always choose the line part of the top because that's the long the longer part that line because you want your cap when you bend it to relax very well so that's the longer part and that's the part I'll be bending downwards so from the finishing you could tell before ironing that everything is already looking the way it should look so the next thing we'll be doing now is to show you how to do the top of a cap as a professional. So the first thing you do just to check it, you, you chuck a part of the circumference of the top of the cap. You take a measurement round. And make sure you get the exact measurement, which is 22 and a half. So that's settled. Next thing you chuck a part of the curve of your top of your cap take your measurement round and know what you are dealing with first before you start doing anything and as a professional you should not be overconfident over making your car because if you make a mistake there's no excess material to correct it so as you can see i'm getting something close to 26 or thereabout so the next thing you do now is trim off and you'll be trimming bit by bit. You will trim bit by bit till you get 22 and a half or a little bit above 22 and a half. I don't really subscribe to 23, but you can also work with 23. But it should just be 22 and a half or a little bit above it, not less than. As you can see, after trimming, I check my measurement again. Now this will determine how big I how big the chunk I'm trimming off will be. So as you can see, I'm using one part of the curve to trim the other part of the curve. So just so that the both curves will be the same after getting the right measurement. So that's what is actually professional about this pattern. You use one part of the curve to trim off the other part of the curve. So I'll just keep doing that till I get 22 and a half or a little bit above 22 and a half. I want this practical to be something you can do on your own. I just don't want it to be something you learn and you can't practice. That's why I'm taking my time to explain like this. So that's why when I was making this video, I didn't actually speed it to make it a bit faster. I wanted it slow so you can see every part of the making process. So I keep trimming and trimming and trimming till I get something 
closer to 22 and a half or 22 and a half and as you can see that is what i got a little bit above a little bit above 22 and a half so the next thing i'll be doing is to attach the cap back to the lining because i already trimmed off the part i attached earlier if i were you what i would do is put stay back on the cap but i didn't want to waste our time so that's done now and the next thing we'll be doing now is attaching the top of the cap to the body so now after confirming my measurements i don't need to be wary of anything anymore all i'll just do is put any part of the cap to any part of the cap and just start now like i said earlier everything is slanted so there's no point of starting from one position to cover one in a straight line you've cut out before whatever this just gives you a round way of making your cap everything is rounded so i'll just sew with full confidence so i'm sewing with full confidence knowing that the circumference of the body of the cap is the same or almost the same with the circumference of the top of the cap so there's no adjusting to do or whatever all i'm just going to do is just join round after joining round i'll just get what i want so whilst you're sewing you should also be careful in terms of your sewing allowance your sewing allowance should be half inch or true if your sewing allowance is half inch or true your curve will come out well but if you keep getting edges while you're sewing you have issues with how well the outlook of your curve looks like so just from the habit of maintaining a perfect sewing allowance whilst you're working so i just hope this video was well detailed enough for you well detailed enough for you to understand how to make a cap if you haven't subscribe to this channel please and please and please subscribe so we can make more videos and have good working experience like we did here i'm really happy to share videos with you guys i just hope you guys can continue subscribing and let's continue doing this and let's continue making tailoring as easy as possible i know when people do things easily they want to continue doing it when doing something is very hard you lose interest in that thing so that's why most times when i'm coming to explain something I'm, i want to make sure i'm explaining it as detailed as possible because some people are out there are just tired of having issues whilst working so when you're making a video and somebody is taking their time to watch i always try to make sure it is as easy as possible for you to, to understand so as you can see the curve is okay now I'll follow my line like i did earlier when i'm bending because it's longer you know the curve is not actually a perfect cycle it's a sphere so for a sphere there's always a longer part so the next thing we're doing is pressing usually i don't feel like showing you how i press i i on the cap or so but there's something I want to clear out here and I want to use this opportunity to show you. I told you earlier that I'll be making two caps simultaneously and both of them will be of the same height, round measurement, width, whatever measurement. And that's just what I want to show you by showing you the process of ironing. Because normally I'm not supposed to show this process, but I just want to show you that. So in case you get contract of making a hundred caps you can always use this process and do it and get 100 exact measurements so you have to press your cap in a way that when your client place it on their head or when you yourself place it on your head you don't need to be arranging anything again it should just sit on your head like you were born with it So that's exactly what I think I have. I 
shift from this video so you arrange every part of your cap when you iron any part that looks rough bring out the rough part straighten it use your iron to straighten it make sure there is no rough part make sure everything should just be smooth and straight so after ironing i'll place both caps on each other so you can see that they are of the same measurement so you can see that this method is actually easy better reliable and good when you are making bulk processes of making a cap when you are making a cap in bulk this is what you should use so there's a safe method and there's also a professional method so once again subscribe to the channel i'm dropping detailed videos on how to do almost anything i'll be dropping more of female jobs soon so just stay tuned so as you can see the cap is well you know the materials they use in making cap are materials that will be they will be pressing iron very well so if you make your cap very well while ironing you see the way everything will come out well once again subscribe to the channel support the movement let's work together so as you can see both of them are exactly of the same size So thank you for watching and I hope you had a good time watching this video because I had a good time making it for you.